Welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins and I'm excited to bring you this lesson on how do pastel surfaces make a difference. In this lesson, I'll be comparing UART pastel paper where I created this painting rather quickly and also Sennelier Le Carte pastel card where I created this painting and in this video I'll go over both paintings. You'll get two for the price of one and discuss the differences. Now, the full extended version is on my Patreon page, but the Monet Cafe channel will get lots of awesome content too. All right, let's do this lesson. Hello artists, welcome into my studio today where I'll be sitting today to paint and I am going to offer you something here that I think will be beneficial to artists who haven't tried a lot of different papers. I'm going to be doing a painting on two different surfaces, the exact same painting on two different surfaces with the same pastel. Let me describe here uh, a little bit about the two different surfaces. The first surface I'll be using is UART sanded paper. It's 400 grit, and this particular one is mounted to a board, which is awesome. I got it from dakotapastels.com. What I did is um, I wanted to also share, if you are, a patron in my Patreon group. Um, we have now, I have a lot of my reference images in there, but we've now added some reference, uh, an, I added an album for the patrons to upload their own reference images. And this one patron, I'm, I'm not going to say her name because she doesn't want me to, but she uploaded the most beautiful photographs for artists to use. And this is one that I was just drawn to, but I happened to realize that the painting I had just done uh, was one that had a similar color palette that I could use. Okay, it just had all those pretty kind of turquoisey blues and some purples and lavenders and maybe some magenta. So I thought, you know what? I've already got the pastels all laid out. They're not right in front of me here, but um, that I used for this painting. I had laid them out to show my patrons all of the pastels I used. So I thought, you know what? I really like this photo. I already have the pastels laid out. Let's do it. Now, because I live in Florida, I often, sometimes I'll veer away from the UART paper because a lot of my UART paper curls up just because it's humid. But I happen to have this piece of UART that's on a board, okay? I bought it this way. But you can mount your own papers on boards. I have a video about that. I'll try to provide a link for that video. I wanted to do a quick little voiceover here. My video is actually how to mount the pastel paintings after they've been painted to the board. And I learned this technique from Alan Picard, who has the video on basically just how to mount pastel paper. It's an awesome video. But that's one way to um, keep you from having that problem with the UART paper. So, I've got a nice little flat, very flat piece of UART paper. I'm always having to try to press it down while I'm painting. So I feel really good about that. But instead of doing on my other painting, I did an acrylic underpainting, uh, acrylic ink, I should say. It's that beautiful um, turquoise color. On this one, I decided to do something different and I'm gonna do watercolor. I'm actually thinking I'm gonna do just a watercolor underpainting, meaning not just one color like I did with this. I really just toned, I should call it a toned underpainting. And this one, I'm, I'm just going to have a really loose underpainting, and I think, because I did the turquoise over here, I think I'm gonna do it with some, some pinks and magentas and maybe some purples. Um, so I, that's, that's my plan. Anyway, I'm going to give myself a time limit too, uh, because sometimes I, I just need to speed it up and, uh, that's going to help me. So I think for the underpainting, I'm not going to worry about that. I always do those fast, but, um, for the pastel part, I'm going to give myself, um, 30 minutes. How about that? That might sound like a lot, but it's not for me. <laughs> All right, let me get going here. Okay. I've got some my mouthful of some of these goldfish baked Parmesan crackers. Yeah. I should get like some kind of endorsement commission or something. <laughs> Jackson likes them too. I want a treat. Sit down. Sit. Sit. Lay down. Roll over. Boom. Treat. <laughs> You'll get a few. Good boy. Well, my plans to have a relaxing 30 minutes to paint got interrupted by about four different phone calls. 
I think I spent about 30 minutes on this, but let me show you real quick. I'm speeding it up just to show you the first. The second painting will not be sped up for my patrons, all right? Um, but this portion will be for both channels, this Monet Cafe YouTube channel and my Patreon page. And I'll tell you how to become a patron later. Um, what I'm doing is I put down water. That's the great thing about UART paper. You can, it's water friendly. That is one difference between this one and the other paper I'm using, the Sennelier Pastel card, which you'll see later, is Sennelier, you don't, you can't add water to it. So I was a little heavy handed with my water. Um, so my whole goal of the UART paper not buckling, uh, the board buckled a little because I had a lot of water on there. So note to self, don't add so much water next time if it's mounted on a board. And um, all I was really doing was using the watercolor just to kind of get a mood and a little basic composition. So what I did here is I just taped it up and here we go. Now here are the pastels that were from the previous painting. If you didn't see that video, I think I think that's a really good video. You should watch it. But these are basically the same pastels. I may have um, removed a couple of them. I, I think I had too many darks in it before. And before the painting's done with this one, I don't think I added any more to this one. Um, so there's the general idea for the pastels. Okay, the board has dried and I'm getting in my darks first with that darkest pastel, uh, basically just getting in kind of the gestural feel of the trees. And by the way, with trees, um, there's a tendency sometimes to just make them all kind of shooting straight up. And there's that's not the way it works in nature. Trees bend and curve and uh, those negative spaces between the trees create such interest rather than them all being like soldiers in a line. Um, so I was working, not this quickly <laughs> since I've sped it up, I was working rather quickly with this. Again, I got interrupted by about three or four different phone calls. Uh, that's one of the challenges of using your iPhone to record uh, your video. <laughs> and um, anyway, so I loved again about the reference photo. I loved um, just the feeling of that light in the upper tree. So I wanted to keep that feeling. And by the way, my patrons will uh, have this reference photo because it's in the new patron uh, member reference album that we have with awesome, awesome um, photographs. And they're already, we just started that already. Um, while I paint here a little bit, I will tell you if you're not a patron, don't feel bad if you can't afford the $5 a month to get some of the extra footage. You're really getting plenty here in Monet Cafe, and it's always my goal in Monet Cafe to provide free art lessons to people in places and of um, whatever your means are that you you might not can afford some of the workshops and uh, buying the online tutorials. So it's always my goal to give those free art lessons, which I will do. I am just giving extra to my patrons and uh, we're having a lot of fun in there now too. I'm, I'm uh, starting something soon. I'm not going to announce it because it's a surprise. But we have a lot of fun and it is a great way to just support this channel. I know there's a lot of people on my Patreon page that literally are just, you know, giving the $5 a month to help Monet keep videos coming. So let me talk a little bit about this now. Enough about that. So I love UART paper and I also love Sennelier paper. So I want to try to describe the differences between the two. UART paper, um, I find the pastels don't go on as impressionistic at first. Uh, sometimes you see the spaces underneath the paper for a while until you either blend it or add more pastel. Um, but this painting is pretty much done here. Uh, again, it was probably good that I didn't have a lot of time because it keeps that, you know, spontaneity and freshness. Now let's move on to the next surface, which is the Sennelier. Oh, I showed my little my little Monet Cafe bracelet. It's the Earth Colors bracelet. I always have these links for the things that I talk about in my description section of my video. So to become a patron, to find the bracelet, I think to find the apron. But now I'll talk about the next surface, which is the Sennelier Le Carte Pastel Card. And I think I'm going to talk about the bracelet a little more. It's cool. All right, let's get started. I had to put on my Monet Cafe apron uh, because I keep ruining my clothes. Oh, and I'm also wearing um, the new series, they're called Earth Colors in the Monet Cafe bracelet designs. And I love this one. This one is, there's two in the series. They have these lava rocks in them that literally, they look like soft pastels. I love them. And what's neat is you add essential oils. Today I'm wearing eucalyptus. You just put a drop on your little beads. It soaks them in and you 
you smell wonderful all day long. So anyway, there's two designs. This one's the Hippie Chick. It has alternating beads. And the Gypsy Girl has all of the stones together with the wood beads on the outside. So anyway, some of you guys have already bought them. And thank you. It really does support this channel. Oh, and it's got the cute little Monet Cafe charm. Okay, time to paint. All right, so what I'm going to do now, though, there are some differences here. You Art Paper is sanded. This is a 400 grit. Um, the Sennelier Le Carte is a pretty gritty surface. It comes in a pad. I think you can buy your sheets individually. I always buy them in pads. This one size, a smaller size pad, and then they have a larger size pad. And within the pad is all these different colors. And I am running low on some of my color options, so I just grabbed a piece of black, and I thought it would be another neat comparison. Not only are we using two different surfaces, but I'm also uh, using two different initial colored surfaces. So right now we're working on black. So this is, it's interesting working on black because your values are kind of opposite. I have a little video, you should check it out, on value, understanding value. And I do an example where I show the differences of a dark value on a dark surface versus a light surface. So we're, we're gonna, gonna be dealing with a little bit of differences because of the darker surface. Like for example, even though this is black, black is relative depending on what it's next to, um, this color, looks dark, doesn't it? So these are gonna be like my darks. And um, uh, anyway, we'll, we'll uh, talk about that as we go along. All right, so I'm just gonna get a quick little initial sketch in. Quick little station break here. This is the portion where the patrons will get the real time content, but hang on Monet Cafe. I'm gonna do a voiceover, speed it up a bit, and give you guys some awesome info. Now, this little sketch portion is a little bit faster than when I start to apply the pastels, but I wanted to share with you what I'm using here. On this piece of Sennelier dark paper, I'm using a lighter colored pastel pencil made by Giaconda. I don't use pastel pencils a lot, but uh, they do come in handy and uh, often, especially when you have to work on a dark paper like this, I believe this was a gray colored uh, pastel pencil. All right, so now here I am beginning with the pastels. I often like to begin with my darks, or I should say always like to begin <laughs> with my darks, um, or basically getting in a value study, whether it's a darker pastel or a medium to dark pastel, and uh, it really helps to establish the overall composition. And uh, like I said before, value is really that important. Um, to establish early on. And I am doing um, a sketch of sorts with the pastels to still try to get that gestural quality of the trees. It's a good idea in art to um, draw your trees with a little personality. I like to think of trees and flowers and things in nature as having their own individuality, kind of like we do as people. I mean, we all have a general form and shape that's the same, but we have our little um, differences. And it's the same thing even with looking at trees that appear to all be going straight up. Um, I like to establish that some may be leaning uh, one way or another, and I love to see the different negative spaces between trees. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen a painting where they, they have a lot of tree trunks um, straight up and down. Um, I see this a lot, and, and I'm not um, belittling or teasing the, the little um, sketch and sips that they have, or you know, the little painting uh, parties that they have. Um, a lot of times they have paintings of things that are all very uniform, and I know they have to do what they can because a lot of times they're working with people who've never painted before. But good art um, usually has those um, differences in shape and direction um, and a little bit of inconsistency. I have a video that I believe it's on both my Monet Cafe channel and my Patreon page where I use a term, I can't remember the name of the video, but I use a term that I call 
forced randomness. <laughs> um, we have a tent. Oh, there's my Jackson. Sorry. This, uh, a storm was coming and he got scared. So I had to put him next to me. Um, uh, but anyway, our brains have a tendency to, to do that, to put things all in a row or in a pattern, like in a field of flowers. So we sometimes have to force ourselves out of that. Um, and I apologize for little breaks in this and talking, but, um, like I said, the, on the Patreon page, it is the real time, and I didn't go in and edit out all those little parts where I stopped. So, But now what I'm doing is I'm getting my next um, kind of uh, a middle value. It's not my next darkest value, but I'm getting kind of a darkest value, a middle value, and then eventually to a lighter value to get an overall feeling of where the values are in the painting. Now in this video here, you're not seeing the original reference photo. I did show a little bit of it at the beginning of the video. Um, I didn't want to share someone else's photo that was from my Patreon group without her permission. So um, my patrons do have access to that photo, but you guys can see the, the painting that I did here that was from that reference photo. And so I'll kind of talk from that. Um, but basically what I'm doing here at, in the reference photo, I think my values on that um, first painting there on New York paper is uh, close to the values in the photo. I'm, the trees that are further in the distance are going to be a cooler and lighter value. That's just how nature behaves. Um, warmth, uh, our um, atmosphere, literally the air gets in the way when things are further away and uh, it decreases the amount of warmth. That's why we see uh, mountains um, in the distance that are kind of blue. You, you notice you don't see um, unless you're really close, you can see some green, but when they're real far away, there's so much atmosphere and air in the way that things cool off a bit. So that's a really neat little trick or a little way to give that depth or perspective in your artwork. And often, pardon, I, I am very gestural with my hands, I notice when I speed these up. Um, often, uh, I use the, the expression, photographs lie, <laughs> um, but what photographs actually do is they don't capture the image like our eyes do. Often, they will uh, make a row of trees um, in the distance and a field. There may be different levels of trees, but sometimes they'll just make them all look dark, and you lose that depth and that sense of perspective. And so we can use these little tricks once we know them to give our paintings um, more of that artistic flair and um, increase that illusion of depth. Um, now I'm getting in some of my lighter values here. Notice I did go in and get some darker values before I just had the tree trunks and then I went in with some darks. I think it was a really dark green and added in where some of those tree uh, the foliage and the leaves and branches were reaching out. I didn't want to get too much detail on the leaves and branches in this. They're, they're more just um, shapes and generalized. I wanted the painting to be about that um, kind of the road pulling you in and just leading your eyes up to that gorgeous light that's up in the trees. And really where that light is um, by the time the painting's done, that's really the only place where there is some warmth in the in the foliage, uh, in those upper branches, and only in the foreground trees, uh, because uh, light is what creates the warmth. You know, if you've got a dim lighting uh, in a room, uh, you really don't see your warmer values as good, uh, as as warm. You'll see them just kind of as a uh, gradation of gray or you know on a scale from light to dark but we kind of lose the warmth so because that sunlight's up there sunlight creates warmth i do end up at the end having a little bit more green in the upper but not a lot not a punchy uh really green green it's more of a a cooler green um and now i'm carving in i like to use the word carving because that's really what you're doing when you do negative painting I got in more masses of tree foliage and shapes, and then I start carving in the little spaces between. And that is really such a neat strategy uh, and technique to use in art to create a more painterly look. I get that question a lot. How do I get my art more painterly? Well, one is to learn that trick of negative painting. And I also have a painting, oh, it's probably within 10 videos ago, um, not a painting, but a tutorial that's uh, on negative painting and just learning some of those strategies. And um, what happens with negative painting 
is um, it makes your edges um, more uh, loose and uh, not as uh, defined with trying, for example, trying to draw individual leaves. Say, for example, you paint a blue sky and you paint your tree on top of the blue sky. Uh, those little positive shapes on top of things just look very flat. And when you carve things in, it's really more like how nature works because that is what's happening with those tree branches and foliage up there. Light is filtering through them um, and it just creates a more believable and uh, painterly loose style. I don't know if I describe that very well, but <laughs> hopefully. But anyway, you can check out that video if you want to learn more. And uh, I'm going to talk a little bit to my Monet Cafe people here. You know, I've been talking a lot about my Patreon group, and I was very blessed that some artists here in Monet Cafe asked me to start a Patreon group. I wasn't going to do it. I, I have enough on my plate already, and I'm the type of person to where if I do something, especially if somebody's going to give $5 a month, I just feel like I've got to give them more. You know, I don't want to just take, I've always had Monet Cafe for free. You know, I've never had any charge for any of these videos. So I knew it was going to take uh, more of my time because that's just me. And, and it has, but I've really enjoyed it too. But at the same time, I always say this, I don't ever want to stop bringing uh, the free tutorials to Monet Cafe. I've been getting some beautiful comments from you guys thanking me um, and telling me. One just recently said, I don't have any resources where I live. Uh, if you haven't seen the new Monet Cafe intro video, I just made a new video. The other one was just getting kind of old. And I share in the beginning of the video that we are literally all over the world. I know right now we're at about, at the point of this video, we're at about it. 25,000 subscribers, but it's from everywhere. I mean, we're talking Israel and um, Japan and India and Pakistan and, uh, of course, America, Australia. I mean, if I can't even begin to mention all the places, but it's just literally all over the world. And it's totally what I had in mind when I came up with the name Monet Cafe. Um, I had the name Monet Cafe way before I started the YouTube channel. Uh, I just thought, it was actually before those sketch and sip things. You know, I thought, how neat would it be if we could just have a little gathering place? This is, and maybe I'll still do this, a little gathering place where people who want to learn about art could just come hang out in this kind of open studio with coffee and just um, supplies and come hang out and all learn together. And so that was my idea. I thought I would maybe make a little place one day called Monet Cafe. And so with my life and, you know, just the world the way it is, I didn't see myself doing that as a uh, reality, so I made it a virtual thing. So that there's a little history there for you. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm getting in the um, a, a basic value for this road, and I want to get it in a little darker at first. That's why I'm using that really cool medium value blue. And uh, it's also going to be very shadowy down there on the road. Notice it's it's below where all that light is. But before the painting's done, I do filter in a little bit of light in the road, like I'm doing a little bit there, um, because there is going to be some, some light, dappled light kind of coming through the road. You see now up in the upper branches how I added that negative painting, and it's taking shape a little bit more that those are tree branches. But um, I really was drawn to this photo. I liked that moodiness. Um, I, sometimes I, I look at my work, I feel like I have a tendency to paint dark, but this was a dark uh, scene, and uh, I, I ended up calling it Enchanted Forest. Um, and uh, in the intro video, no, I'm sorry, in the last video that I just did, I gave credit to one of our Monet Cafe members uh, or subscribers here on the channel because I don't like titling my paintings. And for the last video, I offered a little... Uh, picture in the community tab of the painting and I let you guys come up with title names and I I picked one from one of you guys called in the moment so that's what my last painting was called but this one the title enchanted forest just just came to me it was kind of easy that's what it looks like to me <laughs> so um, anyway so you're seeing it taking shape now you're seeing a little bit of that negative painting you're seeing how the the cooler values in the back um, and the uh, 
decrease in darkness in the back really creates that sense of depth. So um, I'm going to just play some music for the rest of this, study it, um, give it a try, and um, uh, if you'd like to become a patron, it, again, it's only $5 a month. There's some people who are patrons that aren't active, you know, in the Patreon group or anything. They just want to keep these free art lessons coming to Monet Cafe, and it really does help with my being able to afford more time to do this. And because of my patrons, Monet Cafe, you guys, have been blessed because I've been able to buy more equipment. The studio light that I have that really helps you see better. Um, I got a better computer. I got a better iPhone. All because of the, I don't know, seven months or eight months maybe? Six to eight months that I've been, I had a Patreon page. So it really is helping this channel. And, um, you know, the, the people who can't afford, you know, for extra art instruction. So Monet Cafe gets blessed because of my patrons. But anyway, I always have a clickable link at the end of the video if anybody wants to, to sign up to become a patron. So enjoy this video. I'm going to add some nice music. And I hope you guys are painting beautiful things. Feel free to comment. Please subscribe. And you can click the bell icon after you subscribe. And what that does is it'll notify you whenever I put a new video up. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, just comment. I try to answer all your questions. All right, guys. Hang out till the end. That also helps. It's called click-through rate with YouTube, CTR. Um, it helps my videos be suggested more if you watch to the end. I mean, you can probably even fast forward to the end. But um, hang out to the end. And I uh, hope you guys are safe in this crazy world and being blessed.
And oh, here are the two images again of the completed paintings. Keep in mind the first one on UART, I didn't give as much time to, but uh, I like both surfaces. But if you haven't tried Sennelier Le Carte Pastel Card, I think you should give it a try, maybe buy a smaller uh, amount. By the way, they have pastel paper samplers at dakotapastel.com. You might want to check that out. All right, guys, stay safe and happy painting.